This tiny little sensor can save you thousands in water damage. This is the Aquara Water Leak Sensor. It detects water using two metal screws on the base. It's compact, battery powered, and easy to set up. Let's see how this sensor works. Set it up in Home Assistant with Zigbee to MQTT, and I'll show you how to get the most out of it. Let's get started. This is a Zigbee device. It's wireless and energy efficient, and it works with lots of home automation platforms. You don't need an Aquara Hub or the Aquara mobile app. It takes a coin cell lithium battery that lasts up to two years, and the device is rated IP67. That means the ingress protection is dustproof, waterproof, and you can submerge it fully. Unlike some of the other leak detectors on the market, this one can survive a flood. So how does it work? The sensor has two metal screws on its base. When water connects these screws, it completes an electrical circuit, signaling to the sensor that water is detected, which means you can place it flat on the ground where you're worried water might pool like underneath a sink or dishwasher. It takes just half a millimeter to detect the water. In most cases, you'll be placing it flat on the ground, but you can also extend the metal screws and connect wires for more versatility. More on that later. So where do you put these sensors? If you've ever been unlucky enough to experience water damage, one hidden leak can really rack up the expenses. So catching it early is really important. I know someone where the hose on their ice maker busted twice, and now they keep one of these little guys underneath their refrigerator. I also have a colleague who doesn't trust his own plumbing work, so he dropped one of these underneath the sink when he did a remodel. Again, where do you put these sensors? Kitchens, basements, and bathrooms. If your house has running water, there's a lots of possibilities. Let's head over to Home Assistant and set it up. In Home Assistant, under Settings and Add-ons, I'll be using Zigbee to MQTT. I have another video on how to set that up if you don't have it already. We'll open the web UI. Click Permit Join All so that Zigbee 2 MQTT is listening for pairing requests. And to activate this device, you'll hold down the pairing button. There's a soft shell you press down over the water drop for at least five seconds. Once the device is paired, you can give it a new friendly name. All right, let's try it out. Under Settings, Devices and Services, under Devices, you'll find the friendly name and you can see the details. You might see unknown the very first time you set it up. And you can see the battery life. Let's add it to the dashboard. Again, it only takes half a millimeter of water across both metal screws to close the electrical circuit and let the current flow through for the sensor to identify water. Okay, let's add some water. And it's wet. And if we lift it out of the water, it doesn't take very long, it, it's dry. If you're having trouble testing your sensor, you can double check the battery level. We saw that earlier under the device details. Also make sure you have a strong signal. The sensor should be within range of either your Zigbee coordinator or other Zigbee repeaters like a smart light. And remember not to put it on a metal surface. That might be conducting the electrical current. All right, now let's set up an automation to alert us the moment it detects water. So let's go to settings, automations and scenes and click create a new automation. We'll create a new automation from scratch. Let's add a trigger under entity for state. Let's find our entity. And when the state turns to wet, that's the trigger. And then we'll add an action to send our notification. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but I'm going to be sending it to my Home Assistant mobile app. It's a little hard to see it in this UI, so let's look at the raw YAML. All right, and save it and give your automation a name. And now let's test it out. We sent a push notification, but you can also do a persistent notification, turn on a smart light in that room, or trigger an automatic shutoff on the main water line if you have something like a smart valve. Some things to keep in mind when you're using this sensor is the placement. Remember, you'd normally place the sensor flat on a surface, 
and it'll detect water pooling between the two metal hex screws. It's not really intended to detect slow dripping or slow leaks. So to catch a leak more quickly under a sink, for example, you can use a small drain pan to accumulate the moisture. And remember, if your cabinet or flooring isn't level, you'll wanna place it on the downhill side where water might collect. Another thing to keep in mind, remember you can extend these hex screws on the back and attach them to wires. So you can lower the wires into a sump pump basin and detect when the water rises to a certain height. And we've been talking about detecting a wet state, which means we can also detect a dry state. I saw some people using the device to sense when a dog water bowl dropped to a certain level when it got too dry, or you can even set up an automation to refill it. The Aquara leak detector isn't the absolute cheapest safety sensor out there, but it's reasonably priced, it's compact, durable, and a bit more versatile than some of the cheaper options. If this is your first smart water sensor, it's a great choice for some peace of mind. I don't really hear a lot of people talking about water leak sensors, especially not when it comes to smart home technology. It's not flashy, and if it's doing its job, you never really think about it. But if you're a homeowner, moisture and water damage can be really expensive to fix and kind of a nightmare. Something like this little leak detector can be a really smart investment. Thanks for watching, and let me know what you want to set up next. I'll see you next time. Bye!